All right, I've been using this uh, Harbor Spray Spectrum, Spectrum gun for a little over a year now, about a year, I guess. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, if I think it's a good gun. Um, you know, there's two different types of situations. I, I'm a hobbyist painter. I used to be a painter in a body shop. There's a big difference. Uh, if you're a body shop painter, you're looking for the highest quality finish. So you do less polishing and you have less blemishes and some things like that. Um, and you have the ability to spray at full pressure because you have a spray booth. You're not worried about overspray. You know, when you paint at home, you're more worried about, you know, your equipment. Like say for instance, if you have a smaller compressor, maybe you don't have quite a big enough compressor and you don't have all the things you have in a body shop, you don't have a spray booth. So your concern should be things like, well, will this work well with my smaller compressor? You know, will it work? Will it not make a lot of overspray? Can I spray this at a lower pressure than your normal pressure is in a body shop? You know, if it's body shop, you're going to take this thing to the full pressure that it's allowed and you're going to spray at that. And that's going to be a completely different situation. Um, so, first of all, would this be a good body shop spray gun? And the answer is probably not. Um, you'd be better off just buying a premium gun like Technopro Lite. SOTA 5000, SOTA 4000, or a Iwata Supernova. Because you're trying to get the best finish you can. Uh, does this spray gun make a nice finish? And the answer is yes, it does make a nice finish. Um, it takes more time to get a nice finish with a gun that's less expensive than it does with a good gun. Good gun will put out more volume. Uh, a more expensive gun, like you know, four hundred to five hundred dollar gun and up, uh, will put out more volume. You'll be able to spray faster, and you'll still get the same finish results. Now. You guys at home are looking for these things. You're looking for a gun that has the ability to spray with little overspray. For, inst for instance, you're painting outside. You're not in a spray booth. You don't want to paint your neighbor's cars. You don't want to get overspray in your neighbor's cars. You want to be able to control what you're doing. Um, this gun has the ability to do that at a low pressure. So... You can spray with this gun at like 15 pounds and get a decent finish and have very, very little overspray. And that's really what your concern should be at your house spraying. Now, the disadvantages to it is it doesn't do quite the volume uh, as the bigger, as like a Techna Pro Light or something like that. Um, but it also doesn't use near as much air. So the one I would consider getting is the HTE gun if you're looking at one of these uh, the HTE apparently from what I understand they use less air to achieve HVLP um, the, the, the whole thing is is you're trying to get to a 65 percent efficiency transfer to be legal to be legal for HVLP and I believe that these actually do that so for your DIY guide at home using an HTE versus using an HVLP um, will work better on a smaller compressor. Without even trying, I, was, I painted this bracket with this gun, trying try to get no orange peel. Um, it, it's got some roughness in it, but it's not for orange peel. It's actually from the prep. Um, and doing stuff like this with this gun is a great thing. It's a great gun for that. Um, you'll see that it's really dirty looking on the outside. The inside of it's pretty clean. I'm constantly using this gun just to spray small stuff, cleaning up real quick, doing it again. I'm, so I'm not going to go through the whole process of cleaning the outside of it and making it constantly look like brand new because it is used a lot. The thing I would suggest if you're going to look at buying one of these, I would not buy the uh, Harbor Freight Gauge. They're giant. They take up too much space. This is an old, I think, Binks or Sharp gauge I had from years ago. Um, these are really cool. Um, this is my primer gun, obviously, and I don't clean it much I'm not on the outside at all. Um, and this little little gauge here is on Amazon, one that looks like that. 
they're actually pretty nice these smaller ones out and I don't know why I haven't put one of these on there because it's smaller you want a nice small lightweight gauge you're whipping around with all that extra weight it gets to you over the ears and it's better off having a lighter gun that's the whole reason for having one of these the other thing you can do is you can put a whip hose on here if you really want to do that that's up to you um, I don't normally but that kind of does help a lightweight whip to get the best results from this gun uh, you should have a pressure regulator at your at your at your your hose this is the one I use um, if you're using a really small compressor sometimes you can set the compressor uh, set it to about 50 pounds um, this is the one I use on, on here I'll set this at the beginning of the hose and this has a descant filter on it so it has those little pellets in here for getting the extra water out um, nice little setup and then you just plug this in where your airline goes into your compressor or uh, like I have a shop air set up in my shop so like I have a water trap at my compressor which is mounted outside then I have this going downhill um, and I have two water traps here or a water trap and a discant filter here I don't know if I'm saying that desiccant or whatever it is, whatever it's it, the little pellets. Okay, then I then I'll plug this in when I'm painting. I'll set this at 50 pounds so that I'm bringing a constant 50. This will help you with your airflow fluctuation because really what you want when you're painting at home is you're trying to get a really nice um, even constant pressure to your gun. So. If you have a really nice constant pressure to gun, you set this thing at like, you know, you probably can even spray this at about 28 pounds if you're painting a complete car. Uh, the things that I found that um, with this gun that aren't that great are, um, you know, it doesn't put out a lot of volume. So if you're painting a complete car, like if you were doing a Honda Civic or something like that, you could probably get through all that without... Um, getting too much of a dry spot in it, but if you were painting something like a Cadillac um, This gun would here would probably like an old Cadillac This gun would probably not put out quite enough volume to keep You know a wet edge on that so on something like that I would say hey, you know what mask off half of it or something like that and paint portions of it You know and then you'll still get a really nice finish with this gun I sprayed high solids clear with this. I use Tamco high solids clear. Uh, her clear is really, really good. Breaks up real nice in the spray gun. I've also sprayed um, single stage urethane with it. And uh, I've taken her stuff just about straight out of the can. And I can actually break it up real fine and spray it to a really smooth, no orange peel finish. So this gun is actually a pretty good gun for, for the price. You know, If you're looking for something to step up, from the cheap Harbor Freight gun. These are the type of things you're looking for. This one has a nice, good pot. I can clean that pot up, no problem, actually. From where it is right now, I can dunk that thing in, in thinner, let it set overnight and stuff like that, or let it set all day, and sit there and clean up the gun, and it won't erode away this thing. Uh, it does seal pretty good all the time. I've never had a pot leak with it. So, and it's because it has coarse threads. Some people say... If it has coarse fret threads, that's not as good as if it has finer threads. No, if it has coarse threads, you're able to clean these out really good. So I can take a brush and I can clean those up really good if I'm painting anything, uh, you know, important. Like I said, I'm been painting a lot of parts with it, so I'm not cleaning it right now. I'm not getting it, like, super clean. But I can actually easily clean this gun up really nice. So it has a good plastic on the pot. Um, it has this, this head cleans really easy you can just throw the sucker here in thinner and it'll clean up like brand new perfect with no no trouble at all um and this all this has coarse threads so if you look here these threads are really coarse and if you notice there's a seal around here the cheaper guns you know the cheaper one you get the twenty dollar or ten dollar one or whatever even the seventy nine dollar one from Harbor Freight um, has a taper on taper fit 
it does not have a seal like this and that taper on taper fit on the uh, uh, to seal it um, all it takes is a little scratch on that thing and then it won't seal properly and then your your fans all wonky doesn't spray a nice even fan this gun even with um, abusing it a bit look at it you know it's not exactly clean looking right um, it still sprays a really nice, even, straight fan. Beautiful. All I do is clean it up every once in a while in the innards, and I can keep using this gun over and over. So it's really good for the DIY guy at home. Like I painted this panel with it. This has been color sanded and buffed, but it really didn't take much. I had it to lay down with almost no orange peel. I painted this roof. Okay, this is single stage urethane. This has clear coat on it, high solids clear. I painted this door off the car Just with it. Look at that finish, and there's nothing in that. It's pretty smooth. I painted this deck lid with it off the car, same thing. Really smooth finish. Also painted this door off the car and was able to get an acceptable, nice finish. And some of these I did at lower pressure than the maximum the maximum i think is like 30 pounds 29 pounds 28 pounds i'm not going by the exact pound because it fluctuates all the time when you use it when you're spraying so you know you could fluctuate at one or two pounds so i'm just saying i i didn't spray it at the full amount i probably sprayed it at about 18 to 20 pounds and i still got a perfect looking finish with it and again, that's why I was spraying outside. So I wasn't spraying in a spray booth or like that. So I want to control my overspray. That's why I don't spray full pressure all the time. So when I sprayed it in a spray booth with it, with it, it uh, you know, I have a portable spray booth. So I sprayed it in a spray booth that um, sprayed at full pressure and it even comes out a little bit finer, but it still comes out either way pretty darn nice and acceptable for most kind of finish. And I just happen to have one of these. This is very similar to the Harbor Freight gun. Um, and the cheaper one and the problems I'll show you with these guns. If you're looking at cheaping out and not buying, I would definitely say buy this gun over the one that looks like this one. And this is why when you take the head, the air cap off and you look at the, uh, what's this thing called? I can't remember. Anyway, um, if you look here, this is a taper. And it has a tapered fit here. Um, what happens is over time, you know, if you're taking this thing on and off with that funky wrench thing, um, it, it starts to get, you know, boogered up around here. It just happens. It just, it, it takes longer to clean this gun. See these fine threads here? Trying to keep those clean. You're constantly, you'll, you'll find this air cap gets stuck on the gun all the time. And you have to constantly take reducer and, clean it and then see how this has got plier marks on it because it's gotten stuck on a bunch of times things like that this gun takes a lot more time to keep clean this is a pain in the butt this one here i can just throw it in thinner i mean i can leave this thing dirty and it'll still spray really nice all i gotta do is keep those threads clean keep the air cap clean and every once in a while I'll take this thing off clean it and this gun just works beautiful this one here you're constantly, these ones with this style, the taper head and the taper inside here, you're constantly battling uh, cleaning this gun. So if you really want a lot of problems, use one of these. You'll have lots of problems and you'll wonder why you can't spray very good. You get one of these guns for, you know, we're talking about 30 bucks more money or something like that for one of these. It just works way better. It's just a way better gun. I haven't had any problems with um, the fan thing getting stuck. I haven't had any problems with... I've actually had paint harden up while I was... Uh, be, I, I, over, I hit it with Catalyst and I go ahead and hit it with some... Uh, I hit it with some accelerator and then the paint hardened up before I got a chance to use it. That happens every once in a while when you're painting. So... Um, I did that cleaned out really easy didn't have crumbs and stuff in it. So Overall, I'm gonna say this gun is a pretty good value for I think they're a dollar 150 bucks now, but 
I will tell you right now, it's not going to be nothing, anything like a premium gun. So if you have a, a wad of supernova or a, or, or a, um, a, a Techno Pro light or a, uh, Sada 5000, it's going to paint better than this gun does, but it, in a spray booth. But for a DIY guy at home, this is really not a bad gun. It wouldn't be bad if you're in a, in a, in a shop or you didn't always have a booth ready and you need to spray a couple little things outside, some parts. Maybe you're shooting the jams over in the, in the body shop, got, you know, where it's in the body shop, in the body shop area. And, you know, you're shooting some parts or jams over there. A gun like this would be great for that sort of thing. Uh, because it's it, it seals up well it's inexpensive if you didn't clean it perfectly clean all the time it's still going to work pretty good so that's why this gun's good you know this gun here to me is, is a pretty good gun like this is an awada air gunza um, it's a good primer gun okay but i i think that as far as you know finish goes if i was trying to use the air gunza to shoot like if i had a 1.4 1. 1. Air Gunza Awada, and I had this gun. I think that this gun will actually shoot better than I've actually shot paint in this many years ago. Um, and this gun did not shoot a near as nice finish as this gun right here. So 1.3 spray is pretty nice. It, it actually does a pretty good job for an inexpensive gun. So if you're looking for an inexpensive gun that does a pretty good job, pretty nice job, and there's a Harbor Freight near you, you know, does it line up better? Is it better than a uh, Astro? I'm trying to think of the cheaper line guns. Maybe not. Maybe about the same. Maybe about the same amount of money. But it just depends on the convenience of where you can buy it at. You know, if you can't go into the store and buy it and touch it and see it before you buy it if you got to buy it online you don't know what you're getting you might get one with a pot that's junk you know this one here has all the right stuff on it for the diy guy it'll actually work pretty well i think it's actually a good buy for the money um, i would buy another one if i wanted if i needed it um, but like i said it's nothing like the premium gun but it's pretty good so anyway i'll talk to you in the next video Please like, share, and subscribe. Let's see your comments. Talk to you in the next one.